First of all, I would like to thank my dear brothers and sisters, the leadership of MUNA for inviting me, and I'm honored to be with you today. MashaAllah, as I look at this hall, I see that the MUNA membership is growing, and that's a sign of progress that our community is not only growing in number, but alhamdulillah in strength. And for that, we say, Alhamdulillah, publicly and loudly. My dear brothers and sisters, I will focus on one ayah. You can Google it. It's chapter 3, number 11, from Surah Ali Imran. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin-nas. تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله. Indeed, you were brought out. Focus. You were brought out. كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس. To mankind. تؤمنون بالله. كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس. تؤمنون بالله. واليوم الآخر ت... سوري كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله That you ordain what is good and forbid what is evil and you believe in Allah So as a representative of care, I would like to explain to you what this ayah means to me and to my organization. There are four organizations that are based in these communities that have brought up this community to where it is now. Mainly, the Ministry of War of the Deen Muhammad, the community that is considered the oldest Muslim community in the United States, the African-American brothers and sisters, that we stand on their shoulders of struggle for hundreds of years. And also, ICNA, for its many years of service, education, and spiritual upbringing, Mass, similarly, and MUNA. These are the organizations that are considered community organizations. And the community is growing bigger. So 30 years ago, we thought about what needs to be done to help Muslims protect their success and protect their rights from being discriminated against. Whether in the workplace, in the schools, in government agencies, and in public places. And the answer was clear, that Islam was growing, numbers of immigrants from Muslim world countries are growing, mosques have become to be built from the ground up, not just makeshift mosques, turning buildings into mosques, but now building mosques from the ground up, Islamic schools, Islamic organizations, but, but guess what? Who speaks for Muslims in the United States? Who defends Islam and Muslims in the public squares and media? Who defends the rights of Muslims if they're violated or discriminated against in the workplace? Who defends the rights of Muslim students in public schools? Who stands up for the government when the government raids Muslim houses and organizations and shut them down. When the, when the government enlists about one million Muslims 
on the so-called watch list and give him special tre treatment of scrutiny and humiliation and discrimination in airports and at the border crossings. This for the Muslim community. Our other organizations are focusing on building us as community members, as spiritual human beings to succeed spiritually and socially. But who is protecting our success? Who's given us the sense of worth and respect? Who's making us feel that we are unapologetic as Muslims in this country? Who stands up for the Islamophobes and hate mongers? And that's why CARE came into being three decades ago, to focus on educating the public about Islam, educating the media about Islam, defending the rights of Muslims to practice their faith without discrimination, representing Muslims in public squares, and empowering Muslims politically. These are specific strategic goals that we have to be part of this movement, brothers and sisters. In short, where we were is important to understand where we are now. Where we were was that Hollywood took special attacks on the Muslim community, on Islam, Muslims, Arabs, Middle Easterners, and depicted them as backward, as violent, as a threat to human civilization, like the same way they depicted African Americans and Indian Americans for so many decades and generations. Islam was the target of the entertainment media and nobody would speak up or be effective when they speak up against them. Companies, corporations would discriminate against Muslims and fire them from their jobs or do not allow them even to pray Jum'ah or have a beer or wear a hijab. Who will speak for them? Who will defend them? Going to lawyers and law firms, it will cost you millions of dollars and most likely you will not win. Why? Because the, the public psyche and the society is ready for you to be seen as the victim and nobody will stand for you. And politically, who speaks for us? Nobody would speak for the Muslim community. We fought Hollywood, we fought corporations, we fought the government when they violated their rights. Today, brothers and sisters, the situation, alhamdulillah, is different because of the hard work of decades standing up for what's right. Today, we have about 225 Muslim elected officials in the country. Today, we have 35 offices for care nationwide, ready to help you and defend your rights free of charge. Today, CARE has 60 full-time lawyers to defend the Muslim community members anywhere in the country. Today, Islamophobia is taking a seat back, but at the same time, Islamophobia has been weaponized, Islamophobia has mainstreamed, and Islamophobia have, has powerful advocates like the former president and his millions of people who follow him. So, brothers and sisters, to conclude, we are making progress, alhamdulillah. We are growing stronger, alhamdulillah. We are becoming more visible, we are recognized, but there's a lot of work to be done. We're not done yet, because Islamophobia is an international phenomenon. Islamophobia in Europe is ugly. Islamophobia in the Muslim world is ugly. Islamophobia in Bangladesh is, 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 is ugly. How many scholars have died in jail? How many scholars have, have been persecuted because of being Muslim? And therefore, therefore, Muslims in this country, as I conclude, we cannot just sit and enjoy being in America or being Americans. Do you agree with me? We cannot sit on our hands and think that we cannot do anything. Do you agree with me? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you individually, not institutionally, individually. Don't be discouraged. Don't think that you cannot speak or you cannot organize or you cannot do anything. If you can run for public office, why don't you do it? 
do it because less qualified people ran and won in this country. If your child would like to study filmmaking or political science or law, don't prevent them because you want them to be a doctor. Let them be who they are because their experience is different. And I would like to correct some of our leaders and scholars. Don't say, oh, the future belongs to young people. The young people will do a better job. They will not do a better job if they don't see you making it easier for them. If they don't see you stand up and speaking to your members of Congress, they will not move. It will be less likely that they will do it when they grow up. So make it easy for them because you are their example. And inshallah, they will do a better job than you. But they will not do it differently if you are discouraging them and if you don't do it. And the last thing I will say, we conducted a civil rights tour nationwide in the past few months. And a question came up. What to do about new curriculums in public schools? And Muslim children are forced to be in classes that violate their religious beliefs. These days we have been fighting the rights of Muslim students to opt out from classes Muslim children and parents believe that it violates their religious rights. The same thing happened in Michigan. I would like to tell you that CARE is ready to defend your rights. CARE is there to represent you. Stand up tall, stand up proud of your faith, don't give up and seek help from professional organizations like CARE. Next time, if we come back to this convention, I would like to hear stories. I met with my senator. I met with my Congress people. My, my relative is running for public office and I'm doing campaign for him or her. Tell me what you're doing different to help Islam to have deeper roots in this country and for the next generation to be ready to take over, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.